Welcome to this podcast from Stratfor, leader in global intelligence. Angela Merkel says she's very pleased that General Motors has decided to sell its two main European brands to a consortium led by the Canadian auto parts group Magna and involving a Russian bank. It's not surprising. Just two weeks before the German elections, Germany's Chancellor has a vote-warming guarantee that the factories in her country of the main Opel brand will remain open, which might just be enough to take voters' minds off the Afghanistan issue. Hello and welcome to Stratfor. I'm Colin Chapman. Over recent months, many stories have circulated over the future of Opel and the GM British subsidiary Vauxhall, including one that the Detroit beer moth, emerging from bankruptcy, had decided to keep them. All were wrong. Today, Germany's Merkel, the most powerful politician in Europe, could hardly contain her delight. The deal secures, at least for the foreseeable future, all or most of the jobs of Opel's 25,000 workers in Germany, who likely will see their livelihoods as an issue more critical than the role of a German commander in Afghanistan triggering a bombing by an American plane that killed civilians, as well as Taliban militants. Under the deal, a new Opel company will be formed in which Canada's Magna and Russia's Spearbank will own 55%, Opel employees will take 10%, and GM will retain 35%, a minority stake but probably enough to buy them influence to prevent the German concern making inroads in their home market in America. It also continues to give GM a stake in markets that Opel has developed successfully in China and Latin America and GM still retains its 100% control of its ownership of the Holden franchise, a key player in Australia and the Middle East. According to the Financial Times this morning, Magna has promised to extend Opel's reach into Russia as a result of an agreement with Gaz, a car maker owned by the Russian tycoon Oleg Deripaska, to build Opel-derived cars there. One loser in all this is likely to be Vauxhall, the UK franchise of GM, which is in the package but doesn't have the same employment guarantees that Merkel has been able to negotiate. Her win is likely to be Gordon Brown's loss if, as he approaches elections next year, it turns out to be job cuts at Vauxhall's factories near London and Liverpool. But Merkel's win didn't come cheap. Her government has provided the new Opel company with loan guarantees worth $6.5 billion. The deal will surely make the American government uneasy. It effectively owns GM, so presumably it could have stopped it if it wanted to. It didn't, despite the wider misgivings Washington has about the Germans getting closer to the Russians. But Washington didn't do much either to encourage the deal, despite Merkel's desire for it. Merkel has grown in confidence and, in her second term, will become Europe's undisputed and respected leader. Just how US-German relations develop while Germany becomes politically and economically closer to Russia will be fascinating to students of geopolitics and observers of the European Union. A text analysis, Germany, a deal for Opel, is now on our website at www.stratfor.com. I'm Colin Chapman. Thanks for joining me.